Hey there folks and welcome back for another video and this is Q&A number three I believe it's episode number three but before I get to the Q&A just a few programming notes uh, if you will uh, the weather is now nicer outside so I'll probably cut back on the amount of uh, videos I don't think I'll do a video every morning I'll probably do videos like Friday Saturday uh, and a Q&A on Sunday and if something new comes up I will I'll do a video maybe now and then through the week. It's just uh, a lot more to do for me this time of year, so I tend to cut back. So you'll see fewer videos, but I hope you appreciate the ones uh, that I do. If you do, you know, give it a thumbs up if you enjoy. If you don't, thumbs down. It really doesn't make a lot of difference, but if you enjoy it, thumbs up is nice. Okay, so with that program note in mind, let's get to the Q&A. First question is from Phoenix3, and he asked, Question for your future episode. What are your thoughts on rationing soaps and creams based on the fragrance wheel? And what he's saying there is limiting yourself to like one citrus scent, one barbershop scent, one green Irish tweed scent, and so on. My thoughts on that is no. <laughs> I don't do it. Um, it's just not my thing. However, if it's something that you guys want to do, um, certainly, you know, knock yourselves out. I like to have a lot of citrus soaps. I like a lot of green Irish tweed. I mean, I just enjoy trying different soaps of the same scent. And since I don't like some scents at all, you know, I tend to double and triple and quadruple up on ones that I do like. Uh, he also poses the the thought or question, you know, he's concerned about soaps going bad. I haven't really had any soaps go bad. I've had some lose their uh, scent on the surface a little bit. After, you know, three years, I have, I have some a little older in three years, and they're still good once you sort of cut past that first layer. So I'm not that concerned about soaps going bad, but I do purge some of my stuff periodically to make sure I'm not accumulating too much. I still have too much, but uh, really rationing for me, I, it, it's nothing that, um, that I do. But if you want to, there's absolutely no reason not to do it. All right, next question comes from Mark Friedman, and he wanted to make some comments about the gold dollar. Um, first of all, he says they don't come shave ready from the factory. Well, most razors do not, whether it's gold, gold dollar or Ralph Aust or, you know, that's pretty much generally the case with most razors. Um, he says they're significantly difficult to hone, maybe, um, because they're made of a hard steel. In addition, a lot of them are ground poorly, which require adjustments. Probably fair. Um, these factors make any cheap razor, razor very poor choice for an inexperienced, unsuspecting beginner. The best options for a beginner is to uh, buy a gold dollar from an experienced or reputable owner. I would say that is the case with any razor. No matter which razor you buy, buy new, buy old, buy inexpensive, buy vintage. A, an experienced honer not only will hone the razor properly, but he'll tell you if something's wrong with it. So I would go with an experienced honer no matter what. Um, and he goes on to say, um, you know, best case would be better to buy a quality new razor or vintage. Well, you know, the case that I think people make about gold dollar is if you get it from a reputable honer, um, it's just a place to start to spend a little money. Now, the problem with vintages for some people as they're out looking at these estate sales if you're new to straight razors you may not know when you pick up that vintage razor maybe you spend 30 bucks on it it's um, damaged beyond repair might not be visible to your eye as a novice novice so that's kind of why some people stay away from vintage at least in the beginning until they learn um, how to you know sort of uh, get a look at those razors and uh, sort of analyze them for flaws. So Mark definitely makes a good choice, or excuse me, some good comments, I should say. But, you know, I find it to be true of most all razors. Um, if you're not working with an experienced honer, I don't care which razor it is. It's probably not a good choice, but he does make some good comments. Definitely stick with the, an experienced honemeister. All right, Wheelhouse um, is asking if any single-edge razors will ever be released that use the the gem style blades like the uh, paint scraper type blades and the answer to that question is yes wolfman razors james announced a month or two ago that he was uh, he had one of those on the drawing board and he will eventually make it so we're certainly looking forward to that marty pape had the same question so marty look out for that wolfman at some point in the future thanks for the comment or question um 
Space Cowboy wants to know if I've heard of the Razor Rock Triple X Hard Edition. Yes, I used it Sunday, I believe. And it's called hard, but I'd really call it firm or dense. It's really more dense or firm than hard. It's it's not really hard, say like a Martin DeCondre or even a Soap Commander. Great soap, by the way. I liked it a lot. Dan Lutter talked about, um, there was, um, I think, a video where he was talking about brushes and exfoliation. And he makes a comment about brush brush exfoliation. He says, uh, the argument from uh, exfoliating from a brush, simply put, is stupid as hell. <laughs> I probably wouldn't use those that term, but, you know, it's okay. His opinion. Um, you're about to drag a sharp piece of steel across your face. He does make a valid point insofar as, yes, you might be able to exfoliate a little with a very stiff brush, but you're going to drag that blade across your face, which is going to remove whiskers and some skins. Uh, you know, how much benefit is there from exfoliation with a brush? I don't know. Not a lot for me. But, you know, I can only tell you about what works for me. It may be very important to you. If so, press on with it. Jordan Avis. Um, he talks about he got into uh, wet shaving last year and he's been taking things slow. And he got a Vanderhagen soap. And he was very frustrated when he tried to lather it. And, and this issue um, persists. So he's asking really... Uh, where should he go and what type of soap would be a good starter and he mentioned sterling um, specifically yes sterling would be a great soap any of the reputable uh, artisans would be a good soap to start with um, the some of those products like Vanderhagen which I haven't personally used it probably can be a little finicky um, if you really want to go super easy go with something like Tobbs cream it is almost foolproof in terms of lathering um, Taylor Volbond Street um, any of the artisan soaps uh, any of the well-regarded um, mass-produced soaps will be fine um, it can be a little bit difficult starting out for some people just keep working at it while you're watching television or something like that just practice your lathering it will come if you're using a quality soap guaranteed all right next question from uh, Ron Newkirk uh, and he says, no disrespect meant or intended, but you seem to waste a lot of product. Shave cream. Just a view from the cheap sheet seats. I don't know if I waste a lot of shaving cream or not. Um, I got plenty of product. I don't deliberately um, waste it, but, you know, I use what feels good to me. And I would, I would say everyone should pretty much do whatever you're happy and comfortable with. Just go with it, you know, and uh, if it works well for you, just proceed with it. Chris Morley, he's, he was uh, responding to the Beaver Woodwright video, and he wants to know if he should buy an above-the-tie razor. The answer to that question for me is quite simple. If you have the money, if you want a quality piece that feels great in the hand and shaves well, yes. Um, now, is it going to be five, ten times better than Edwin Jagger? No, don't expect that. But when you hold it, when you use it, I think the, the craftsmanship um, is evident. I think it feels nice and it's something that you know you can admire while you're holding as well as using so for that reason if you have the money if it doesn't put you in a bond then sure treat yourself to it all right let's see who we got uh, next wheelhouse 15 he says the one thing I don't really care about in a soap is scent and he goes on to say basically it doesn't matter to him the scent is not important whatsoever to me I'm absolutely opposite of that <laughs> I have to have a good scent it's integral to my shaving experience when I get a good scent first thing in the morning it's a good wake up it's a pleasant um, um, sensation it, it makes me feel good it is essential that I have a scent not only that's present and that it's fairly robust but that I enjoy I won't bother using a scent that I don't like to me life is short enjoy it and I really enjoy this variety of scents which is why I buy so many soaps I like to experience what's out there take it in and enjoy it so one of the things to do you know really try to enjoy this and it's not only about what smells great you put it to your nose once and go oh, I love that it's about enjoying the entire process and I do so we just have a difference of opinion there if you don't care about scent the great thing is it leaves the door wide open you can use anything so you know that's good for you all right Next question or comment comes from Frank Santor. He wants to know who has the best orange shaving soap. I can't tell you who has the best for you, 
but I can tell you a couple that I'm fond of, um, Maggard Orange, I can't remember whether it's called Orange Menthol, I think, very, very good. Um, there's one from K Shave Works called Fizzy Orange that's good. Um, Mike's, I think it's called Black Black Pepper or Orange and Cedar or something, pretty good as well. There are a number of them, but I think probably the Maggard and the K Shave Works probably my two favorite. Oh, uh, I'm forgetting Don Marco is a kind of orange scent by uh, Razor Rock, excellent too. So any of those would probably be great. Let's see what we have next here. Um, Reed asked the question. Basically, he's he's seen me using the uh, Colonial Razors General, and he wants to know what are the advantages of the General versus um, like a normal razor. And one of the things that I need to do to illustrate that is go get the General because he wanted to see the difference in size. So stand by, and I'll be right back with the General and show you. All right, and so we're back. And one of the things that Reed wanted to know about double edge versus single edge and it specifically wanted to know about the size difference and let's see if I can uh, give you a look at these size wise the um, let's try it this way maybe you can see better the the single edge here that uses the artist uh, artist club style blades is probably something about a quarter of an inch wider this way so with each stroke you get about a you know say a quarter inch more real estate per stroke some people may like that, some people not. Um, the blade, the, the difference, the main difference is the single edge razor blade is more rigid. It's very stiff. It doesn't flex. In a double edge razor, a lot of times there'll be some flex in there, which allows for blade chatter, a little bit of shaking of that blade. A lot of people don't like that. Some people will only use single edge razors because of those stiff and rigid blades. It helps them. Now for me, I use either. I don't really prefer one over the other. I have been enjoying the uh, General quite a bit. Um, it's been providing for some wonderful shapes. However, I really enjoy both styles. So it's really six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. The single edge blades like this, um, you get more shapes per blade, but the blades are also considerably more expensive. So, you know, probably when it comes down to it, the single edge razor blades would be a little bit more expensive than double edge, but you know, some people really prefer it. So the advantages are really dependent on the user, but it's mostly based on that stiff, rigid blade. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Reed. The next question, and by the way, on these last couple, I tend to throw in a couple just to illustrate kind of what I go through. And one of the reasons I do this is because I realize there are people out here who are considering um, making shaving videos and, and one of the things I want to impress upon you guys is don't take this stuff seriously these people don't really have a problem with me um, they're projecting their own problems onto me and, and this happens a lot it's, it's sort of like when you get pissed at work and you come home and and the cats moving along and, and somebody kicks the cat now I wouldn't but some people would they're sort of transferring their frustration onto something else and I get that a lot. They don't really have a problem with me. They have a problem with themselves and it sort of comes out <laughs> on me. So I don't really take it seriously. I don't take it personally. I don't invest a lot of emotional capital in it. Do people care how they're perceived? Sure, we all do. But do I care about these people in particular? I don't. They're insignificant uh, in terms of the effect they have on my life because they don't really have any effect. But I put them here only to show you guys this is what you're going to deal with sometimes. My advice to you, laugh it off, don't worry about it, discard it. Don't spend energy really responding to it, which I have done a lot of times. And to be honest with you, it's a waste of time. You never solve anything because these people are looking to provoke you. They're looking for a fight. They're looking for a reaction. So the best thing you can really do is ignore it and spend your energy elsewhere. That's my advice. Okay, with that, let's get to... The first one, pretty cool name here, Fiery Kicking Chicken. <laughs> he says, why don't you stop calling these videos spotlights and start calling them what they really are, paid infomercials. <laughs> I'm quite certain you're getting paid and receiving free product in return for these videos. I'm following the money and it's leading straight to you. No person in their right mind would buy all these soaps. Try a little honesty, fat boy. I mean, the only thing you can really do is laugh this type of thing off. 
you know yourself, you know the truth. So anything that fiery kicking chicken says, it has no effect. I mean, the truth has not changed. His opinion doesn't affect reality at all. So laugh it off, go on to the next person, which we're gonna do now. Uh, and this one's from BL. And he says, you continually peddle this cheap artisan crap when places like Straight Razor Design and Bull Goose sells better pr quality products at great prices. You're the king of cheap garbage and you're leading new shavers in the wrong direction. Again, this is someone with an agenda. They try to project their frustration onto me. The truth is, uh, sure, Straight Razor Designs and Bull Goose sells great products. But all this artisan stuff, these razors like the general, I mean, it's great stuff as well. And I'm going to give you an example of when we talk about getting what you pay for, because that's kind of an argument that floats around a lot in this hobby. And I'm going to give you an example of a situation where it just doesn't uh, make sense. Stand by just a moment. So when we talk about folks who always want to go with the high end uh, gear and they're constantly using this line, you get what you pay for, you get what you pay for, you get what you pay for. There is some substance to that sometimes. Like for example, the uh, above the tie razor here. It's a fine, uh, well-crafted um, piece of metal. You get a fine piece, a fine razor for the money you pay for it. Absolutely true. Is it five or 10 times better than a cheap razor or an inexpensive razor? No, but it is a very good quality product. So you get what you pay for. Okay, I agree. But let me show you a difference here. This was a Plasson brush, 22 millimeter knot that I got from um, Plasson out of France. And if you'll recall, back when we first started getting Plassons from L'Occitane, they were $60. Later, they were cut in half to 30. And over time, prices continued to drop. So I paid, I wanna say nearly $80 to get this brush from France, 22 millimeter knob. Roll it forward a year or so ago, or, um, I don't know when this came out, maybe six months ago, nine months. Razor Rock Plus Soft, 24 millimeter knot, same type of fiber, 10.99 I think this was, 10.99. Now, of these two brushes, I actually prefer to use this one. It's more dense, it just feels better to me. I still love this one, you know, it's one of my loves, but I prefer this one. I paid almost 80 bucks for this, and I'm getting better experience out of this. So this is a perfect example of a scenario where I didn't get what I paid for. Now, granted, this has a lovely handle. I, I love the color handle, but if I'm gonna grab for one, just based on the way it feels um, and my enjoyment for the shave, it's gonna be this guy. I like to look at this one. I prefer to use this one, 10.99, almost 80 bucks. So please, when somebody is just using the old line, you get what you pay for, you get what you pay for, you get what you pay for. It is not always the truth. Here's another example. Sterling Kong, 20 bucks. I think 26 millimeter knot, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's ridiculously inexpensive. Same type of fiber. Provides virtually the same experience, only more knot to work with. So if you like bigger knots, why would anybody in their right mind say, you get what you pay for, assuming when you make that statement, it assumes this is always going to be better than these two. And it is simply not the case for me. Maybe for you. Um, this really is of no better quality than these two when it comes down to it. And so you really have to follow this out throughout a lot of the products in this hobby, especially for you new folks. You don't always get what you pay for. I can tell you some times where you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for when you buy toilet paper. You get what you pay for when you buy batteries, like AA batteries. If you go on the cheap, they're going to run out faster. And if you go on the cheap one, toilet paper, your behind might not like it. So there are some cases where it's absolutely true. And those two are irrefutable. But when you hear people in this hobby telling you, you got to pay $70, $80 for a soap. You got to pay, you know, $150 upward, uh, upward of $150 for a razor. You don't. You can get great performance for a lot less. However, there are always going to be cases such as the above the tie, such as the Wolfman, such as other things where the money really is warranted because you're going to get a really nice product. But it is not true across the board. So please, 
uh, when you see these people and they're out trumpeting, oh, you need to get this. It, it's and it, and it happens to have a hefty price tag. Look at it and be skeptical and consider um, who's saying it. Consider if they have anything to gain from saying it. Are they selling it? That's a key point that you always have to consider. Who has something to gain? Now, when you look at me, I'm not making a penny on the Sterling Kong. I'm not making a penny on the Razor Rock Plus Soft. And I have never made a dime, and Plasana has never, as many times as I've plugged Plasana, I called it the Brush of the Gods. And the reason I don't call it the Brush of the Gods anymore is because these guys came along. It can't be anymore. These guys came along, it, it, it unseated it. So, no matter how many times I talk nicely about these things, it doesn't put a penny in my pocket. So when I'm talking about things, like this Colonial General Razor, it's because I like it. Do I like the Evans Brothers? Yes, I do. They're one of us. And and I'm rooting for them. And I'm rooting for the competition and, and, and fair market and bring prices down and, and things being good for the consumer. But if it was crap, it'd be a different story. I wouldn't have used it for the past five or six days. I'm enjoying it, and it is what it is. Will I make a penny out off of this razor? Absolutely not. So consider that when you're watching the videos and when you're in the forums, when you see somebody post, uh, hey, check this out here. This is the best cream ever. Or And maybe it is. And maybe they're being absolutely 100% genuine. But always, you know, do what I always ask you to do. Keep them up. Keep them open. Follow the money.